Hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with The Ancient Scholar. I hope you all are doing well. Again, I want to apologize for the kind of this different format. Uh, I'm uh, still uh, still up in a hotel room, uh, still doing my um, intubation uh, rotations, or my, well, not necessarily intubation, but my airway management uh, rotations um, in the uh, surgical uh, theater. Uh, so I'm going to be out of uh, still out of my ho hotel room. I want to continue on the uh, lines of discussion in physics. We finished up with the gas laws, we got through that. You, as you can tell, this is a major section of any any respiratory uh, physics, any any study of respiratory physics. Uh, you're you're going to have to cover gas laws. Now, these gas laws aren't necessarily specific to respiratory physics. These gas laws can also apply to many concepts. And if you take a say a standard physics course. Um, you take a uh, thermodynamics and kinetics course, these gas laws will apply. And these gas laws will also apply in, in most of your chemistry courses. Uh, most, at least the general chemistry uh, curriculum, will require a fair amount of uh, study with the gas laws. So again, they're, they're, these do apply. But today what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about density, specifically the density of gases. Um, density is often denoted by the uh, Greek, um, this little P look letter. This is known as Rho, um, R-H-O. You often see that uh, that um, letter of the Greek alphabet that, uh, designating um, this concept of density. So density, what is density? Density, the, the definition of density is, is simply the mass of something, how much mass it has, divided by volume. So unit mass divided by volume. And now generally what we use for mass is the kilogram. Uh, we will actually be using grams for gas for most of our gas calculations. But uh, most of our density comes from the kilogram. Um, volume in context of gas laws, we'll, we'll always use liters. Some some will use milliliters, some will be use cubic uh, meters, but we'll use grams and liters for our, our core units. Okay, so it's unit mass per unit volume. So mass over volume equals density. And um, where does this concept of mass come from? <clears throat> The concept of mass is kind of interesting. Concept of mass actually is a chemical concept. It comes from chemistry, and what it is is it's it, it is a, a physical characteristic. It's a physical characteristic of all matter. All matter has some sort of mass associated with it. Now, uh, certainly there are things like uh, photons, like light, that doesn't really have a mass or, or a rest mass, and that's not really relevant to this discussion. But it's really any, any type of matter is going to have a certain type of mass, and it actually goes all the way back to the atom. When you look at the periodic table of elements, there are some very special numbers. Um, the most important number, let's say that we were to look at hydrogen, the most important number will be probably at the top of number one. That is the atomic number. Um, that is analogous to the fingerprint to any atom. That tells us how many protons are in the nucleus. How many protons are in the nucleus of that specific atom? <clears throat> That's very important because protons, as we know, have a positive charge, and the number of protons dictate the number of electrons that this atom can have. And as we know, electrons dictate the chemical behavior of an atom. So it all goes back to how many protons in the nucleus because that tells us the chemical properties of an atom. Well, there's also another number, and for hydrogen, there'll be a number, it's generally decimal 1.00. Uh, so on and so forth. I don't actually remember what the whole number is, and it's, it's actually going to be changing here um, with some of the new guidelines, and perhaps I'll talk about the, those at, at, at a different time because they are a little non-intuitive. Um, what this number is, is this is the atomic mass number. This is the mass number. This is the mass for this hydrogen. And in, in the case of hydrogen, it's pretty simple. Generally, uh, you have one proton, in the nucleus, and that's all we really have in the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, one proton, so the mass is going to be more or less one. 
um, something called an atomic mass unit, an AMU. Now, some of your uh, more complicated atoms, um, such as helium, if I throw helium up here, HE is going to have an atomic number of two. So that means that there are, the atomic number is two, there are two protons in the nucleus of that atom. Well, that just tells us protons, right? And as we know, most of the mass of an atom is protons. Uh, proton plus neutron equals mass, most of the mass of an atom. The electrons have uh, approximately 2,000 times uh, less mass than a proton or a neutron, and we really don't count their mass in day-to-day in, in -day calculations. Obviously, relativity and relativistic effects play a role, but not for this discussion. Well, helium's atomic number is actually 4 point something we can just go ahead and round it to four. So again, there are two protons, and we can, we can guess by proxy that there are, you know, there are gonna be two uh, neutrons in the nucleus of helium. Now again, I'm not really talking about um, isotopes and all that, and that's actually why we get a decimal um, point, because we have to c c throw isotopes into the mix. But we can just generally say at our level, that um, there are two protons, two neutrons. And we can do this with every every atom. So the atomic number is a fingerprint, but what we're interested in is the atomic mass when we talk about density. Okay, so that's kind of your chemistry review for the day. Let's kind of get to the point now. Well, the point is, Atomic mass is, is an inherent physical characteristic of matter at the atomic level. We can take that concept at the atomic level and we can apply it to the, the larger world, if you will. And how do we convert the atomic level to the macroscopic level of the world that we know? And if you remember, the way that we can convert that is, is through something called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. Okay, sorry for my, uh, my, my poor handwriting there. Avogadro's number. What Avogadro's number tells us is if I have hydrogen, and hydrogen has an um, atomic mass of one and some change, 1.0 we'll say, we know that if I have an Avogadro's number of hydrogen, I'll have one gram of it, right? One gram. And Avogadro's number, as we know, is an incredibly large number. It's huge. And it's more commonly known as the mole, which is uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 24 atoms, okay? Or molecules or what have you. In this case, atoms. So 6.02 times 10 to the 24 atoms of hydrogen will give me approximately a gram of hydrogen. Okay, so you can see how I've made that conversion from atomic mass units to gram through this concept known as the mole or Avogadro's number. Okay, well that's, that's neat, but how do we get this volume concept, right? Because uh, we, okay, we figured out how to get the mass, but how do we get the volume? Well, the volume comes from the Av Avogadro's um, law when we when we consider gases. So Avogadro's law, if you guys remember, Avogadro's law states that at a standard temperature and pressure, and if you actually research this concept of standard temperature and pressure, um, there are actually many different um, ways of defining standard temperature and pressure. Probably the one that is most well known is the um, IUPAC definition that says that the standard, uh, a standard atmosphere is um, at uh, zero degrees Celsius um, at a pressure of 100 kPa, which is going to be approximately 14.5 uh, PSI. Now, the beauty of, of respiratory physics is you're not really going to be held to that. Um, what we're going to tell you is that Avogadro's law Avogadro's law, okay, Avogadro's law states that at standard temperature and pressure conditions, STP, one mole 
of a gas, and we'll assume an ideal gas, and we'll assume they're all ideal. One mole of a gas is going to equal a volume of 22.4 liters. Okay? So let me just say that again. At standard temperature and pressure, one mole of a gas is going to give you a volume of 22.4 liters. One mole of any gas, any gas, any gas, it doesn't matter what. So, one mole of at, um, at standard temperature and pressure. So one mole of molecular oxygen is 22.4 liters. One mole of molecular hydrogen, these are all in their gas phase again, is going to be 22.4 liters. So one mole of any gas, any gas, regardless of its mass is going to equal 22.4 liters. Any gas, 22.4 liters. Well that is really handy because we have a common volume that we can compare uh, the mass to, right? And remember density, rho, equals the mass divided by volume. Well, the beauty of Avogadro's law is the volume of any gas is always going to be 22.4 liters at standard um, temperature and pressure conditions. So all I need to plug into to find the density of any gas now is simply the mass. That's all, the mass. So hopefully that makes some sense. Through the agency of Avogadro's number, we can figure out the mass. So let me just go ahead and um, we'll do the, the most uh, basic, or, or one of the, the most uh, basic um, uh, calculations that we can, we can think of, and that's going to be hydrogen. So I'm going to go back on the periodic table of elements. I'm going to look at my hydrogen as an atomic number of one, atomic mass of 1.0 and some change. Okay, and I want to know the density. I want to know the density, the rho, of hydrogen gas in its gaseous phase. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug the numbers in, right? So I'm going to go 1 and I'm going to divide it by 22.4 liters, right? What do you guys think? We need to be careful here. That's actually not correct because this is atomic hydrogen that I plugged in here, but I want hydrogen. Again, Avogadro's law only works for gas and ideal gases, so hydrogen gas. I want hydrogen in its gaseous phase. So hydrogen gas is uh, two um, hydrogens covalently bound, right? So it's actually an H2 molecule. So we'll go back to our gas and um, instead of one, it's going to be two divided by 22.4. That will give me my rho or my density. Okay guys, uh, getting kind of short on time. I'm going to cut it off here and we'll pick our conversation up um, at another time. Thanks for hanging in there. Take care guys.